All right, welcome back. This is the third video in a series of videos about how to take measurements to add your speakers to Subliner if you have little to no experience with audio analyzer. So in the first video, we talked about planning how you're going to do that out in the field. And in the second video, we set up our audio analyzer. We verified it with a microphone cable. And in this video, we're going to practice measuring a speaker at home some way that's easy to set up so that we can do it a few times and make sure we're comfortable with it before we go out into the field. Okay, so anytime you take apart your audio analyzer and set it up again, it's always a good idea to go through that verification step again. Remember what we did? We connected both of our outputs to both of our inputs and then we just took a measurement in our audio analyzer here and we should expect to get a flat line in the magnitude a flat line in the phase here around zero degrees and then over here in the impulse we expect to see a peak up if I zoom in here. So once you've verified your audio analyzer and checked all your microphone cables and they all match then it's time to set up the speaker and the mic. So I talked about the speaker a little bit something easy that you have available and then the microphone if you have a measurement mic that's great if you can borrow one from a friend that's great but if not um, you know, I don't want you to go out and spend a lot of money on something you're never going to use again. So any, you know, quality condenser microphone should be fine. Something common like a Shure SM81 would be good. But if you do want to get into audio analyzers and maybe do some more measurements in the future, then, you know, start with a cheap measurement mic um, and have some fun. So where are we going to place this stuff? So what we're going to practice is actually the first one of the first steps you're going to do in the field in the next video to make sure that you have a target for your HF to kind of have an idea that you're doing it right. So we're going to measure the distance from the bottom of the speaker to the ground, divide that by 1.5 and then that'll be our microphone distance. So here's my speaker. I'm going to measure to the ground. I get 1.4 meters. 1.4 divided by 1.5 is 0.9 so then I'm just going to place my laser disto here at my mic and make sure that my mic is 0.9 meters away from the speaker. And then for the placement of the mic vertically horizontally you just want to be on axis with the speaker so here I'm right in front of the speaker and most speakers their on axis point is midpoint in the box that's how the manufacturers often design them that might not be the case for you um, but that's a safe place to start at least so you should see that your microphone here is at about the middle here. All right, that's the placement, that's the equipment. And before we actually make any connections here, let's go in and just do a safety measure here because we're going to plug our audio analyzer directly into our speaker or directly into our amp. So let's turn this way down and so we don't accidentally create some loud noise to damage our ears or damage our equipment. And here we can start making our connections. So here is my audio interface and what I'm going to do is unplug those connections from output one and input one. I'm going to make those my microphone connections. So now I'm going to take my microphone, I'm going to plug that here and I'm going to take my speaker and I'm going to plug that into output one. There we go. So now I've just replaced output one and input one with my speaker and my microphone and I still have that other cable there connecting output to to input to. And I can go ahead and turn my speaker on and check the level. Now I don't see any signal here yet. What have I done wrong? I think I forgot to apply phantom power here. Now notice again all my faders are down and I want to accidentally send this signal to the output and create feedback. Okay, as soon as I turn this on you saw that this level jumped up here so now I'm going to hit check levels again. Now I can hear it but this says low level and I'm not sure if it's loud enough so how loud does it need to be? Well for these tests I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, for these tests just shoot to be at least 10 dB above the noise floor and then once we get out into the field and your head's not right next to the speaker then you can go higher and we'll try to get at least like 20 dB above the noise floor. 
What do I mean by that? Well, if we draw a line here over the noise floor, and let's just, for argument's sake, say that it's here at this number 60, then we want to be 10 dB above that, which would be 50. Now, the scale is really small here, but here's 50. Right, so we just need to get on this scale, this vertical scale, we just need to get a little bit above that. So we need to go louder. Okay, louder. Great, that's loud enough. Uh, this is always going to say the wrong answer here. It's always going to say level low, probably because uh, we didn't calibrate our input. So if you want to read the REW documentation and calibrate that, then all these dialogues will make sense and be giving you correct information. But I'm just going to advise you to ignore that for now. Now you notice that I didn't adjust my microphone preamp. And I probably want to get a slightly hotter signal in here. But again, for these tests, I think this is fine. Um, you see that I have plenty of headroom. The whole goal with the uh, microphone preamp is just to have it hot enough so that we're getting nice quality signal, loading the preamp correctly, but not clipping. So what you would want to do is uh, keep playing that playback signal uh, and turning up the preamp. And in fact, I'll just demonstrate that for you a little bit right now. So we can see we have plenty of headroom there. So what if I turn this up? Okay, the noise floor goes up, and now that the noise floor has gone up to like 60, now I know I need to get up to 50 or, you know, sh again, shooting for 10 dB of the, above the noise floor, and then I just check my level and make sure I'm not clipping. Okay, still plenty of room here, so why not go ahead and get a healthier signal here. Okay, no problem, and now I even get a level okay, even though, again, this is not, not super important here. That was all just setting the level. It looks like my connections are working and I can try to make a measurement. And here we go. If everything worked well, you should see some data here. Now, this is not uh, a video series on interpreting the measurements here or using the audio analyzer at a deep level. Um, so to just quickly kind of understand, did I get good quality actionable data? What I'm going to recommend is that you just jump over to all SPL and that you get something to compare it to. Now, how do you get something to compare it to? So my suggestion, head over to Tracebook sign up for an account, you'll have to confirm your email address, but then once you do, you can download a measurement. So from the home page here, there's a little search box, so you could start typing in your speaker, but as you can see, there's 188 speaker models. So it's unlikely that out of the thousands of speakers in the world that Tracebook already has yours. Here's my suggestion though. If you can't find exactly your speaker, just download any other similar speaker. So if you are measuring a line array element, maybe you can find one of those. If you're measuring a point source speaker or a sub, you can find one of those. And if all else fails, then just download exactly the speaker that I'm going to download now, which is the Focal CMS50. Because uh, having any kind of data to compare it to is better than nothing, I think. So if you click Option, click on this file that says CSV. That's the file that you want. And then my one of my favorite things about REW is that then you can just drag that file in here. Go back to all SPL and we don't see it here because it's way down here. If we go up to this controls and click align SPL and click OK, now they're on top of each other and we can sort of reposition this graph here, make the controls go away. And now we can see this. Here's the one I just brought in. Here's mine, and if I sort of turn them on and off, now I can see, oh, okay, yeah, this is kind of what a speaker looks like. Now, if you imported my speaker and yours is very different, then don't be surprised if these are quite different, but we just want to have something to compare to. This is what a speaker looks like. Now, if these are the exact same speaker, 
then why is this one seem so much cleaner? This one has a lot more ripple up and down and up and down. That's because I'm in a small room. This is what we want to avoid, right? We're just practicing now. And then once we get onto the field, this ripple is going to improve a lot because there's no more walls, uh, much less reflections getting into the microphone. Now you don't have to do this, but it might also be fun to take a look at the overlays here and head over to this impulse response. And then if they're close enough to each other, you can just kind of zoom in here. And I think if you option click, now there's some key command where if you click and drag, I think maybe it's right click, there you go, right click and drag, you can pan around. And now I see like both of these are peak up on the impulse response and that gives me some confidence as well that I did this correctly. And again, you can see my measurement here, this orange one is a lot more noisy and you can see those reflections coming in. So that's it. I recommend that maybe you do this a, a few more times, experiment with moving the microphone up and down a little bit, see how that changes. Do you get more or less high frequencies? How does it compare to this other speaker that you imported? We always want to have something to compare it to. And if you want, send it to me. Um, you don't have to export it or anything. You can just go over here and click save all, or you can click this little save icon here and send me that package. Sometimes people go to the trouble of exporting and you don't need to do that. Just save this entire thing and, uh, you know, upload it to Dropbox or uh, wherever and send it to me and we can chat about it. All right, so please let me know what did I forget to talk about? Um, what questions did that bring up for you? And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.